Hello and thanks for joining me. Well, I got a question for the viewers. I uh, need some uh, advice here. Uh, this Wells Index Mill has a unusual number, uh, brown and sharp number nine taper, uh, and I had to buy new collets for it. Uh, the collets are available, but uh, a lot of accessories are not, including a boring head. So for the boring head, I got an adapter. Got a uh, 7 8 thread, something like that. It screws into the boring head. But if you use a boring bar on the side, it has to go in reverse to be in the right direction to cut. So how do I use that in reverse without unscrewing? Without that unscrewing? I don't really, I think you can get, I think I may have to just uh, get uh, reverse boring bars and they are available. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen them, so that may be the on, only answer. But anyway, let's get on with the topic for today. I got a new vise. Uh, it's what they call a CNC vise. And it's a four inch, which is about a, appropriate for this size mill and uh, well, let me show it to you and, and show you what, why I got this vise. Okay this is, here's here's the vise made by uh, HHIP I forget what that stands for H and H I don't know I should know but I don't anyway it's a CNC vise, and I don't know why they designated it as CNC, but it can be mounted, clamped to the table like that, on either side. I think you can even mount it to the end, but everything's square on it. But the, well, the feature I liked the best was the fact that I can mount it anywhere on the table. It doesn't have to be lined up with the T-slot. Uh, and that enables you to utilize the entire travel on your uh, y-axis uh, or more of it anyway but it gives you that flexibility to mount it wherever you want uh, now I don't have the uh, correct tools to measure this vise for accuracy uh, hopefully it's a good one uh, oddly enough it was almost half price on Amazon as compared to several other websites uh, I'll put the link down below. Uh, I think I'm going to like it. Uh, but in order to mount this, I've got to make some hold down clamps. And that's what I'm going to do today. Uh, so let's get started on that. Yeah, here's the stock I'm going to use. It's a uh, inch and a quarter, I think. Yeah, inch and a quarter. Inch and a quarter square. And here's the idea. That'll uh, go into the slot on the mill. That'll sit on the table and there'll be a bolt that goes through that to hold it down. One thing I wanted to do is I mean, I could just make a solid block like that, drill a hole in it and hold it down. But I wanted to keep the profile low. That way if I'm drilling off to the side here, I got my drill can go through and I won't hit the bolt for the hold down.
Oh. Broke the end mill. I guess perfect. Okay, I think that'll work right there. It's centered both ways, inch and a quarter and inch and a quarter. It'll be room for my bolt or nut to turn. Okay, now I can make this vise anywhere I want in relation to the T-slots. The only drawback to this type of ice is no uh, coolant grooves. Nothing to catch coolant if you're using flood coolant. And uh, that may be a drawback. Uh, something I discovered, and I, I knew, really, I was using a carbide end mill here, and I, and I broke it. And that was my, uh, my fault. I didn't lock the, uh, the knee down, and I think it allowed it to move a little bit. But uh, I switched to an high, a high-speed steel end mill, and... Uh, a high-speed steel cut way better, and it's a bigger end mill. So I may go to flood coolant and high-speed steel. I don't know. That was fairly impressive, uh, the difference between the carbide and the uh, high-speed steel and the way it cut. And I knew high-speed steel was sharper, but the advantages of carbide are, are significant, but that really cut nice. Anyway, I like it. Uh, that about wraps it up for today. Thanks for joining me, and uh, be sure to subscribe and ring that bell.